Johnny Football was one of the most polarizing players in college football history while he was at Texas A&M. But in case you guys forgot, Manziel's eventual successor looked like he was going to become a star who could potentially be better than Manziel himself. They called him Kenny Trill. In today's video, we are going to go back in time a few years to reflect on what happened to former Texas A&M star quarterback Kenny Hill and why everything fell apart as quickly as it all started. If you are new to the channel, I make videos about college football, and since you're watching this, I know you're a football fan, so take a quick moment to subscribe to the channel. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. If you have a video idea I should do next, please let me know in the comments section down below, and make sure to turn on post notifications so you never miss another upload. Now let's get started with what happened to Kenny Hill. Kenny was born in the city of West Palm Beach, Florida, but he spent the majority of his childhood in the football heaven of Texas. More specifically, South Lake, Texas. His father, Ken, was a famous baseball player who even made an all-star appearance in the MLB. And because of his dad, Kenny was born with natural athleticism and a father who, who could help him make it big in whatever he decided to do. He became Texas famous once he got to South Lake High School, and it was pretty clear that he had the talent to do big things. He took over Texas high school football and helped lead South Lake all the way to the state championship game. They won that game, and he also won the Gatorade Player of the Year in the state. He threw for over 3,000 yards and 27 touchdowns, while also rushing for over 1,000 yards and having 33 touchdowns. Kenny was a legit dual-threat quarterback prospect, and he had become a consensus four-star recruit. But he didn't have the kind of offers that you would expect. His final three schools were Baylor, Texas A&M, and Kansas State. At the time, Baylor and Kansas State were having big years, but one would think his offer list would have been a bit more prestigious. It wasn't though, and he committed to Texas A&M. His plan was to be the backup to Johnny Manziel, play for two years, and then head to the NFL after his junior season. Maybe that would happen, but that was quite the statement by Kenny. According to 24-7 Sports, Hill was a four-star recruit, the number nine dual threat quarterback, and the 241st best player in the class of 2013. Something I found kind of cool was the two coaches who recruited him to play at A&M were Cliff Kingsbury, the coach of the Arizona Cardinals, and David Beatty, the former head coach at Kansas. Going into the 2013 season, Kevin Sumlin was the head man and Johnny Manziel was fresh off winning the Heisman Trophy. The hype for Johnny football was unreal and no one really cared about who his backups were. But because we do care about backups on this channel, you will learn that Connor McQueen and Kenny Hill were the backups on the team. The Aggies were projected to go 10-2 and finish second in the SEC West behind Alabama. The Aggies had a really talented offense that included Manziel, Mike Evans, and star left tackle Jake Matthews. They began the year ranked number 7 in the country, and their first loss of the year came at home to number 1 Alabama. That set the narrative for the team as they lost number 24 Auburn, number 18 LSU, and number 5 Missouri, all ranked teams. They did finally buck the trend with a win over number 22 Duke in the Chick fil A Bowl, but Manziel's second year was sort of a letdown to a degree. On the year, Kenny actually played in four games, passing for 183 yards and a touchdown. Going into the 2014 season, there was going to be competition at the quarterback position as the Aggies brought in five-star recruit Kyle Allen to come in and battle for the starting job. Many thought that Kenny was going to win the job, but when he got in trouble, it was assumed that Allen was going to be the guy. Well, it turns out they were wrong as Kenny beat out Kyle for the starting job, and Hill was set to start in their week one matchup on the road against number nine, South Carolina. With Johnny Manziel now in the NFL, many people were looking for the next star quarterback to get behind, but no one's eyes were on the Aggies. A&M was expected to be good because they had talents such as Josh Reynolds, Ricky Seals-Jones, and Speedy Noyle, and they began the season ranked number 21 in the country. What Kenny was about to do next was truly spectacular. He went on to throw for three touchdowns and a new school record 511 yards in their blowout win. He broke Johnny Manziel's passing record in his first career start, and the Aggies catapulted all the way into the top 10. Kenny remembers getting a ton of different nicknames, but the media asked him which one he wanted to go by. He answered with, Kenny Trill sounds good to me. And he remembers getting an ESPN notification on his phone a few minutes later. The word Trill is a combination of true and real, and after one game, he was that. The college football media jumped all over it, saying that Texas A&M was the new quarterback factory and that Hill could be even better than Johnny was. His parents even tried to trademark the name Kenny Trill for their son, and that right there probably caused some bad karma. Kenny threw for four touchdowns against Lamar and Rice his next two games, but the SMU game was where things began to go south. He only threw for two touchdowns and also gave up his first interception of the year. Against Arkansas, his completion percentage dropped significantly, but he still threw for four touchdowns and an overtime win. The Mississippi State game is where things actually started to go bad. The Bulldogs were ranked number 12, and Hill threw for three interceptions, which would be too much for his four touchdowns to overcome. 
This was only one loss, but the following week against Ole Miss, he threw two more interceptions and the losing streak was now two. This could have just been two bad games, but he had a chance to prove himself against number one Alabama. The Crimson Tide held Kenny in check as he didn't throw a touchdown and they won 59 0. Yeah, Kenny Hill had beat a good South Carolina team back in week one, but he had lost them their last three games against good competition. It was time for Kevin Sumlin to make a change at quarterback and see if the on field results would change. He plugged true freshman Kyle Allen into the starting spot, and honestly, it worked. He led them to back to back wins over Louisiana Monroe and a huge win against number three Auburn. They did lose to LSU and Missouri, but Kyle got them bowl eligible, and the team looked better when he was there. While this was happening, a picture of Hill outside a bar drunk went viral and he was ultimately arrested and suspended. Kyle Allen took his job, and Kenny was literally starting to fall off like Manziel did. The Aggies ended up going to the Liberty Bowl, where they would beat West Virginia to finish the season with an 8-5 record. In the 8 games that Kenny did start, he threw for 2,649 yards, 23 touchdowns, and 8 interceptions. Honestly, those numbers really aren't that bad. Rumors were swirling that Kenny Hill was going to transfer away from the program, and they were right. The following year, Kyler Murray came in and split time with Kyle Allen, it's crazy that all three of these quarterbacks ended up transferring. Kyle Allen went to Houston, and Kyler Murray, as you know, went to Oklahoma. Eventually, Kenny Hill asked for his official release from A&M, and everyone knew pretty quickly where he would end up. The rumor was he was going to go back home to the Dallas area and play for TCU. He'd be able to go back to the place that brought him up and spend a year getting his life together. Plus, star quarterback Trevon Boykin would graduate, and he could win the job after that. That is exactly what happened, and Kenny Hill enrolled at TCU with the intent to get his life back together and to be a starting quarterback again. In 2015, Trevon Boykin and the Horned Frogs were on a roll until he went down with an injury which sidelined him for the biggest game of the year against Oklahoma. They beat number 7 Baylor in one of the best games of the decade, and the Horned Frogs won their bowl game against Oregon in the Alamo Bowl. Going into the 2016 season, Kenny was the projected starter at quarterback, but he was going to have to beat out Foster Sawyer for the starting job. Gary Patterson liked what he saw from Kenny, so he named him the starting quarterback, and TC was picked to finish second in the Big 12 behind Oklahoma. In Hill's first career start with TCU, he threw for 439 yards and two touchdowns against South Dakota State. They won two of their next three games, but Hill didn't exactly impress. He finally broke out against Oklahoma, where he passed for 449 yards and five touchdowns. Besides leading them to a win over number 17 Baylor, Kenny and the Horned Frogs really struggled as they limped to a 6-6 record and he just wasn't playing at that high of a level. They ended up going to the Liberty Bowl and lost a close game against Georgia. On the year, he threw for 3,208 yards, 17 touchdowns, and 13 interceptions while completing 61% of his passes. For the most part, Kenny got his football career back on track, but a highly anticipated freshman recruit was coming in and he was going to have to bring his A game if he wanted to win the starting job for the 2017 season. Sean Robinson was a highly touted quarterback coming out of high school, and he was expected to compete with Hill for the starting job. Kenny apparently showed out in practice though, and he was named the starter once again going into his senior year. Sean Robinson would end up starting the next year, and now he finds himself at Missouri, which is my school, and I'm really excited to see what Sean's going to do here. He opened up the season with four touchdowns against Jackson State, and the Horde Frogs entered the polls. It'd be Arkansas on the road, and then Hill threw for four more touchdowns and a win over their rival SMU. The first big test was on the road against number 6 Oklahoma State, and Kenny did enough to not only win that game, but they also knocked off number 23 West Virginia the following week. After back-to-back -back wins against Kansas and Kansas State, the Horned Frogs had climbed all the way up to number 4 in the country, and Kenny Hill had become a legend all over again. Their next game was going to be tough though, as it was both on the road and against the Cinderella of the 2017 season, the number 25 Iowa State Cyclones. This game was a disaster for both Hill and TCU, as he turned the ball over three times in crucial moments, and they lost their first game of the season 14-7. They rebounded with a win over Texas, but a loss to Oklahoma eliminated them from college football playoff contention. On senior night, Hill threw for three touchdowns and a win over Baylor, and they were set for a rematch with Oklahoma in the Big 12 Championship. Just like every other team in the conference, they struggled against the Sooners, and they got blown out. The Horned Frogs ended up going 11-3 after they beat Stanford in the Alamo Bowl, and they finished the year ranked number 9 in the country. His passing yards dropped in 2017, but he threw for 23 touchdowns and only 8 interceptions this time. Hill was not named to any postseason teams or didn't win any awards, but he left college as one of the best quarterbacks in the country that year. He didn't end up getting drafted, but he did sign an undrafted free agent deal with the Oakland Raiders. They ended up cutting him in July, and he signed with Montreal's team in the Canadian Football League. That was short-lived as well, and he, ended up going a completely different, and he ended up going a completely different direction with his life after that. Kenny rejoined the staff at TCU, and he became a graduate assistant. He said he really loved the idea of coaching, and it is now his dream job. 
Recently, he was promoted to an offensive analyst, and I think he's going to continue to climb the coaching ladder. Right now, he's only allowed to help with film and game plans, but I think he will soon be able to help kids, and I don't know of a better person than Kenny for that job. He knows better than anyone what it's like to be in the spotlight and make mistakes while you're there, so I'm sure that he will really help mentor these kids and help them get their lives together. I know I'll be rooting for his success in the coaching world, and I'm super excited to see where he will be in a few years. Unlike a lot of my What Happened To videos, Kenny Hill managed to both save his life and his football career, and I think he's doing what he's destined to do. I remember the legend of Kenny Trill quite vividly, and I loved watching him while he was at TCU. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and we can all learn from his story. If you did enjoy today's video though, or want to help my channel grow, please take a moment to smash that like button and subscribe and help me reach 3k subscribers by the end of July. If you are still here, check out my video about what happened to Shea Patterson and all my other college football documentary style videos. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.